Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Mark on RC Nerd 74. In today's episode of my RC Scrappy build, I'm gonna go through a lot of details on the fuselage I still had to do. The plan was to start with building the wings, but I cannot start with the wings until I'm really happy with the result of all the details on the fuselage. So I had to do some stuff on the propeller, on the motor, cowling, shocks and tail, airflow, a lot of little things, but important things to make RC Scrappy really work perfect. The most exciting thing is to test the RC Drake Horse 4 blade prop. This is what will happen today, so let's jump into the details and have a closer look. So first let's have a look at my ordered wheels. The ordered wheels were too wide in comparison to full scale Scrappy's wheel size. So I installed the drill mount on the wheels put them into my drill and sanded them down to the right width with 80 grit paper and for a nice finish I took 240 grit to make the surface of the tires really look nice and clean. The result looked pretty good so I decided to also narrow the rims. The rims had the same issue, they were too wide in comparison to full case crappies rims. So here I cut it the two halves in the center so a few millimeters I cut it off, also with using my Dremel and my drill and cleaned all the center part, all the plastic remains and like this the height in comparison to the width of the rims is pretty exactly the same as the full case crappies rims. I was surprised how much weight I could pull out of these wheels. The stock weight is around 83 grams and after uh, narrowing the tire and the rims and use shorter screws to screw together the two halves of the rims I ended up with 63 grams. In comparison to the stock wheels of the carbon cup I reduced the weight of one wheel about uh, 40 grams so 80 grams in total two wheels that's really great to save this weight. The second try I did on the wheels is to pour the bigger foam on the rims. For this I ordered some yoga foams which are 6 cm wide and in diameter around 20 cm. I was able to cut out a tire out of this foam. First of all I had to make the center hole. For this I marked the center of the foam then drilled it with the Dremel cutting disc and use it in my drill. This makes a pretty clean and straight round hole into your foam. On the opposite side you have some foam remains. This you have to cut off with a knife. Then I had to tape and mark the new diameter of the bigger tire and cut it the raw shape of the tire with a bread knife. For a better fit of the rims into the foam I had to sand the inner diameter a little bigger and also use the Dremel to make the round shape of the rims fit into the foam. After this the rims fitted perfectly into the foam then I was able to put the whole wheel into the drill, sanded it down to the shape with 80 grit sandpaper again and also finished the look with 240 grit sandpaper. The tire looks pretty nice, the result is really good. The only issue is that it's a bit too narrow. So I decided to go with the ordered wheels which are around one centimeter wider. They look more scale than my homemade wheels but it was a great test to see if I'm able to make a custom tire out of a simple piece of foam. The result is pretty good so if you find the right size of foam you can easily make a custom tire with simple tools at home. Because of the narrowed rims I was also able to reduce the length of the wheel shafts. So I cut them down to the right length with Dremel and cutting disc and sanded them to a clean finish and all in all the wheels look way more scale like this and I'm pretty happy with the wheels now so I will stay with this design of the wheels on RC Scrappy. Then I had to solve an issue on my shocks. 
The shocks so far work absolutely great, no issue with this. But on the pivot points of the shocks, uh, there are some rubbers, but these rubbers are not made for the heavy weight of RC Scrappy, so the rubbers get squeezed. So my solution is that I removed the center part of the rubbers and replaced it with aluminum tubes. First I had to prepare the pivot point holes on the shocks with a file to fit the aluminum tubes perfectly into the pivot point holes. Then cut a few centimeters of aluminum tube to make eight narrow tubes. Cut these little thin tubes or shims and sanded them to a nice finish. Then cut it off the center part of the shock rubbers and did a fit check if all can be assembled together with no issues and everything looked good. And then the shocks were ready to reinstall. So like this, I have a clean working installation of my shocks. Next step was to work on the tail of RC Scrappy. Fullscale Scrappy has a motor cooler built in in the tail of the plane and I wanted to rebuild the visible parts of this cooling system on RC Scrappy 2. The carbon parts I made in a previous episode and now it was time to make these parts fit on the fuselage. First I sanded the air intakes and air outlets to final shape, marked the position of the intakes and outlets on the fuselage, then I had to press some deepenings into the fuselage to make the air intakes and air outlets fit perfectly on the fuselage. Then I had to open the fuselage for airflow. The reason for this is if you have an air intake which presses in air but the air cannot go anywhere you have some drag on your plane and you don't want to have any unnecessary drag on your plane. So I opened the fuselage to let the air flow into the fuselage and opened the other side to let the air out again. So like this, I have almost no drag of this air cooling system. It hasn't a real cooling function on RC Scrappy, but the target there is just to make it look as scale as possible. There won't be any issues about the strength of the fuselage because the belly of the plane and the carbon fin and also the glued on air intakes and air outlets will reinforce this area of the fuselage. Because of not perfectly centered fit of the spinner on the cowling, I had to do a little modification on my motor spacers. The solution was that I slightly bend the motor spacer on both ends. Like this I get a slight S shape into the spacers and with this shape I can adjust the position of the motor shaft and the spinner and I don't change the angle of the motor. So the motor angle stays exactly the same, fits perfect on the cowling and like this I have now the exact right position, perfectly centered position of the spinner on the cowling. Another little detail I wanted to improve is some seams on the wing mounts which don't look good. So I sanded them down to absolutely clean flat surface. Then I finally got my RC Draco 4 plate prop. The reason why I give it a try is it's the best scale look I can get with this four blade prop. I also like the shape of the blades and I wanted to test this prop if it fits on RC Scrappy, if it pulls in us. First of all I did a short balance check that didn't look too bad, not perfectly balanced but pretty okay. Then had to remove all the paint because RC Scrappy has not a red prop but a black prop so removed all the paint with some thinner, sanded the surface to have a clean surface and balanced the prop with 240 sandpaper to reduce any vibrations and the result of balancing and cleaning of the prop looks pretty good. To make it fit on the motor shaft I had to increase the rear end of the prop center hole, build it slightly out so like this the installation is absolutely flawless. Also had to do some sandings on the center part of the prop to adjust the blade track. After sanding I had absolutely perfect blade track so 
the probe was really nice modified like this. Then I did a pull test comparison between the two blade stock probe versus the wooden probe which is a three blade probe and the RC Draco probe. Pull test on the stock probe showed around 3.9 kilograms, wooden probe is around 4.3, 4.4 kilograms and on Draco I first failed with making the pull test because the Draco prop killed my 60 amp ESC and this was the reason why I changed to the Hobbywing 100 amp platinum ESC which can handle this prop pretty easy. On the new ESC I had to do some programmings, change to wing mode and set the back voltage to 6.0 volts and then I was ready to do another pull test this all worked fine. The Draco prop pulled about 4.9 kilograms. So it's by far the strongest prop. We will see how well the motor will handle this prop. I'm not a pilot who is always on full throttle, so I'm pretty sure the motor won't have any issues with the Draco prop. To finish the nose of RC Scrappy, I also had to order a new carbon spinner. This is still on the way, so I'm waiting for it and as soon as it arrives I will do the modifications on the spinner to make it fit on RC Scrappy. Another thing on the fuselage or on the cowling I had to do was to give it the absolute final shape. I had to improve the edge around the canopy. This was not perfectly shaped so far, so I took some thin vinyl tape to draw the perfect round line and sanded it down with 240 grit sandpaper to get a smooth round edge around the canopy. Then there were some little imperfections on the cowling which I had to rework. So I took some 10 minute epoxy, reworked all the little details to have a cleaner look, to have a more uh, symmetrical look of the cowling and sanded all that stuff to the right shape. Then I also reworked the whole epoxy seams which were still there to glue on all the air intakes and air outlets. So I filed and milled them down to a perfectly clean shape so the cowling is ready for paint. Then it was time to begin the work on the LED openings on the cowling. The target is to install three uh, 7 watt high power COB LEDs. So I had to draw the positions of all three LEDs, drilled the LED holes into the cowling. And because of the round shaped front end of the cowling, I had to make some short carbon tubes to make the installation of the LEDs easy on a flat surface and not on the curved surface of the cowling. So I cut it and sanded these tubes to the perfect shape and glued them into the cowling using 10 minute epoxy and then after curing I filed the LED holes to the final shape. LED installation and light test will follow after the whole paint job is done. This is it for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one. Have a good time. Happy flying. Bye bye.